So we're here to uh, meet somebody really nice if we're single or just make connections and enjoy ourselves if we're not. Uh, also, it's Jerusalem Day. So what's the Hebrew day today, which is Jerusalem Day? Anybody knows? Let's start easy. What's today's month in the Hebrew calendar? Iyal. Okay, so we just had Yom HaTzmon. Kafchet. Very good, which is the 28th. And what does it mean in Hebrew, Kafchet? Koach, strength. So the six-day war is when we showed that we have some strength, some military might. Uh, that was one of the most uh, astounding victories in military history that Israel achieved in June of 67. When precisely in June 67 was Jerusalem united by the paratroopers of the IDF? Okay, the war started on June 5th. It ended on June 10th. Which day was the conquering of Jerusalem? Let me give you a very thick hint. It was the third day of the war. <laughs> <laughs> June 7th, very nice. 47 years ago, uh, on June 7th, 1967, the paratroopers united Jerusalem. And many of us know that before Jerusalem was united, uh, there was a period called... Kufata Amtana, the waiting period before the war, people felt Israel was on the threshold of annihilation and destruction. There was real existential dread. Now, 14 years exactly after Jerusalem was conquered on June 7, 1967, there was another monumental event that may well have saved Israel from distinction, extinction again. What happened on June 7, 1981? exactly 14 years after Jerusalem was united. Again? The bombing of the Iraqi nuclear reactor called Tammuz, which is originally a Canaanite god that used to die every summer. Now it makes a reappearance as the 10th month of the Jewish calendar. And it was bombed by the Israeli Air Force on June 5th, 81, weeks before it became operative. Imagine Saddam Hussein going nuclear. It was very close. But Israeli pilots saved civilized humanity from that predicament exactly 14 years after the conquest of Jerusalem in 67. The, who, anybody knows, and that's a tough one. Who was the youngest pilot? Ilan Ramon. You're good. What's your name? No. no. Beautiful. So Ilan Ramon was the youngest pilot bombing the Iraqi nuclear reactor, and he was in the last plane to turn around go back, going back to Israel. So he was most at risk. And Ilan Amon, as we know, became the first Israeli astronaut in, uh, in outer space. And he actually got to see Jerusalem from outer space, literally from beyond the world. He had an otherworldly perspective on Jerusalem. And he emailed... Ilan Ramon emailed the president of Israel at the time from outer space telling him, guess what, yesterday we flew over Israel and I saw Jerusalem and I covered my eyes and I said the Shema Israel. Now, what was Jerusalem's first name to follow up on Daniel's questions? Shalem. Noam's on fire here. You know the NBA commentator? He's on fire. He's unconscious. So... I uh, hope we have CPR experts. Anyway, so, um, so shalem. Anybody knows, what does shalem mean in Hebrew? Complete, wholesome. Yerushalayim, kabbalistically speaking, is actually a juxtaposition of two words. Iru, will see, will behold. Shalem, completion. Yerushalayim, there are two Yerushalayims. The Yerushalayim where we like to buy our falafels and stay at a nice hotel and chill and relax when we were in Israel. That is the urban, physical Jerusalem that we know that uh, the paratroopers united in 67. There's a Kabbalistic Jerusalem that is not Yerushalayim Shelmata, the Jerusalem from below that we like to visit. There's Yerushalayim Shelmala, celestial Jerusalem, metaphysical, spiritual Jerusalem. And that is the idea of Yerushalayim as Yeru Shalem, will behold completion, wholesomeness. And that's what Ilan Ramon saw. Ilan Ramon emailed Israel's president and he told him, guess what I saw from outer space? 
I saw that the whole world is yechida achat beli gvulot. I'm quoting from the first Israeli thing, Jerusalem from an otherworldly perspective. I saw that the whole world is but one cohesive unit in the complete absence of differentiation and distinction. Everything is one. Like we say in the Shema, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. And Adonai Havaya means being. Being is one. God is one and infinite. And we all dwell within that infinity. And that is something that uh, Ilan Ramon saw with him. You may know that Israel, uh, Ilan Ramon took a lot of stuff with him to outer space. Very significant things, very symbolic things. Two of those things were a coin from the great revolt of the year 70 when the temple was destroyed. There was a coin called Shminit HaShekel, basically a Jewish currency going back 2,000 years to when we lost Jerusalem. And I think that was a way of saying, I am connected to the Jerusalem that we lost when this coin was actually used. And we had to wait until 1967, 1,897 years from the year 70 to reunite it. So that coin that Ilan Ramon took, ancient Jewish money, represents our uh, hold on the physical urban Jerusalem. Another thing that Ilan Ramon took with him was a Kiddush cup to be able to say Kiddush in outer space. Kiddush, of course, means sanctification, looking at the world from a spiritual perspective. So I want to conclude with the following statements. There was a great Hasidic master, Rabbi Nachman of Braslev, who was the great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov. And he used to say, Bechol makom she'ani olech, ani olech l'Yerushalayim. Wherever I go in the world, I am going to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a state of mind of seeing the world as one cohesive unit the way Ilan Ramon saw, saw it from outer space. So we have two Jerusalems. We have a Jerusalem in time, 15 hours away from here by flight, 7,500 miles by space, and we have the Jerusalem that we long for to remember the big picture of life, that we're all part of this world, which now we know through satellites is unified in the infinity of outer space. Half a millennium ago, the greatest Kabbalist that ever lived, Rabbi Isaac Luria, called this greatness of mind. When, er when we are able in the mind's eye to zoom out from our fragmented consciousness when we wake up and we just think about our own little shell, our own little bubble in life and the things that we're worried about and see the big picture of how the whole world is unified, this incredible ball hovering in the infinity of outer space orbiting around the sun, that is but a reflection that we are all interconnected in the one, the Ensof Baruch Hu, the infinite one, blessed be He. So uh, my wish to all of us on this Yom Yerushalayim is that we remain attached in our hearts and minds both to the urban physical Yerushalayim Shel Mata that we love and we love to visit and to Yerushalayim Shel Mala to that ideational spectrum in which we realize that everything exists in the one, in uh, God Almighty, being attached to Jerusalem politically as the capital of the Jewish people and being at attached to the unity of all things in God. Yom Yerushalayim Sameach, thank you for inviting me.